Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about my new TEC controller. Uh, this idea of this is that everyone can download this, reproduce this, they can use this to control TECs either for just heating or just cooling or heating and cooling. Um, this will be great for enclosures like trying to keep your 3D printer enclosure at the same temperature, it can heat and cool. Uh, it would be good for um, that space heating. It can be set up to cool uh, a load directly like in a CPU or a water chiller or your car for additional cooling which I think quite a lot of people like the idea of that. Um, but the idea is this is fully free, you can re-download this and um, reproduce this. Uh, I've got everything on um, uh, a Google Doc where you can get the wiring for this and you can download the firmware for the Nexon display which is this display and the Arduino which runs it all. This does look like a huge mess I admit it doesn't need to look like a mess but that's just what testing is about. It all works fine. Uh, you can make it very very neat and tidy yourselves. So what we have here is we have got a 24 volt though turned down to 21 volts applying power via this controller. This is a IBT underscore 2 which will allow us, it's a motor controller so it allows, allows us to either heat or cool which is pretty cool. Uh, you can use a much bigger one, this is from a 3D printer bed, this will only allow you to do uh, heating or cooling though. Uh, you can parallel these up, uh, you can have one per TEC or, or two per TEC or no I probably can't do two per TEC but you can have two TECs probably per one. Uh, over here we have my old crusty test rig that looks pretty uh, pretty nasty now after many 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 years. Uh, these there is a set of two TECs down here, two up here. Uh, these are not currently turned on. We're water cooling this side of it so this is effectively the hot side in this video and this is the cold side. Only these two are going. These are two 245Q Max TECs, genuine ones. Like I said they're actually 24 volt ones which I'm run, running them in series for this because you pretty much never want to run TECs at their uh, UMAX for, from an efficiency point of view. And of course they are con controlled. Now you can have up to four temperature sensors. The default ones are cold side sensor, hot side sensor. Uh, you can have one which I don't have plugged in here which is an additional target sensor which is can float around uh, anywhere. Uh, and you have this which does humidity and um, a temperature. So what we have on this screen is a little moving graph of the historical temperatures. We have the cold temp, we have the hot temp, we have the outside and the percentage of powers. It also displays the minimum and maximum for those variables. It's currently negative power uh, because it's currently cooling. If it was heating those would be positive values. We can adjust which one we can see on that graph. Uh, if we wanted to. Uh, and down here we can adjust how uh, how many points we can see on the screen. Basically the duration of that graph and how fast it's going. So it's currently trying to maintain a 5 degree temperature on the cold side which it's doing and it's constantly adjusting the power to uh, maintain a 5 degree temperature. Uh, you, this is a PWM controller uh, controlled by uh, PID, so you can adjust the PID values. So on the next page, we have a different layout with twice as much information, but we couldn't fit the graph in. So we've got hot side, cold side, outside, temperature, we've got percentage power. The first four is the same four as you saw on the previous screen. We then have humidity, um, that's giving me problems, the sensor there it was 70% but now it's back to 100, need to replace that. Uh, we have a dew point and we have the inside temperature which is the sensor that I don't currently have plugged in and we also have fan percentage because this has a fully integrated uh, fan controller because you're always going to need fans. So we can enable and disable this. Uh, 
temperature wise pretty straightforward right you got your target temperature what temperature do you want this to be at so if we were to change that to seven degrees and go back back We have that transfer the information back. I can go back to this one. Okay, now it's going to back the power off and try and keep it at seven degrees. And you can see the temperature, which is the blue line. It's a bit hard to see the color via the recording of this. Okay, pretty self-explanatory there. So we have target sensor and what that is is that you can use any of the sensors any of the four sensors as the target temperature so that depends on what you're trying to achieve uh, if you're trying to cool a space volume you'd probably use the one of the other sensors you wouldn't use the cot or uh, the cold or the hot side uh, temperatures you'd use uh, one of the other temperatures as a target sensor but in this particular case we're only concerned about maintaining the cold side temperature and not a volume of air because we don't have a volume of air or the temperature of some mysterious load which is indirectly connected uh, probably water cooled and now we have uh, these above due so this what this will do is it'll work out what the dew point is assuming the sensor is working uh, and then keep it above dew point because if you don't do that like at the moment we're just gathering up piles of water that's just dripping everywhere so we can choose to keep that uh, above dew point or not um, and then you can say i want to keep it at dew point uh, which you could say is not the greatest idea um, or you can have that uh, how many degrees above dew point you can adjust this between uh, centigrade and fahrenheit you can adjust the sensors uh, to add or subtract some offset to make them read higher or lower under the Piltier you've got the PID values which adjusts the sensitivity of the controller of how it's adding and removing power you do have a maximum power so this sets the maximum amount of power that will be applied to the TECs this is good if you have a power supply that can't quite deliver all of the power that TECs will draw and or if you've got a 12 volt TEC and a 12 volt power supply and you may discover that the best cooling is actually happens at 10 volts not 12 volts so you could um, reduce the power to achieve a better result than running that at 100 percent you've got uh, minimum maximum temperatures so this is uh, super useful for if there was to be some kind of fault let's say um, uh, the fans broke down on your water cooling system or your air cooling system cooling the hot side or the pump broke down or something like that what this will do is this will ensure that the hot side and the cold side do not go higher or lower than, than these uh, temperatures which is really cool so what it will do is if the temperature of the hot side gets to 60 or above it will start backing the power off to maintain uh, a 60 degree hot side now you probably don't want that but this is effectively a fail safe so it's quite good and likewise from the other side you may not want to actually freeze your water if it's water cooled or something like that so you can set a minimum temperature of zero you can adjust these obviously that's a really important fail safe uh, that i've added in there you can do manual power which is as it sounds you can you can just adjust this between minus 100 and positive 100 which will add and remove power just manually by adjusting the slider instead of using the automatic PID modes uh, then we do have the mode so we've got heating and cooling which is what it's currently doing although it's only cooling you can do only cooling automatically 
automatically heating and manual mode. Under the fan, there's quite an extensive amount of work I've done on the fan. So you can power a two pin, three pin or four pin uh, fan with this device and it will automatically adjust fan speeds. You can, if with four, two or three pin fans, you'll have to have another uh, MOSFET doing that, adjusting the 12 volt because this only puts out five volts. Um, but it's far easier just to buy slash use a four pin fan and you can just plug the output of this out of the Adreno strat into your four pin fan and, and it will adjust the RPMs. We do have a startup boost that is for some fans particularly if you're using a two or three pin where you may have the set speed too slow that it can't actually start so that'll give it a boost of power to get going. You've got manual speeds, pretty obvious, uh, that you can adjust just adjust the fan speed from 0 to 100. Uh, you have min and max temp and this is where it starts with the automatic adjustment of fan speed. So you can set a minimum speed and a maximum. Now this is only 5 degrees apart so this is a bit silly but we can say at 25 degrees below 25 degrees we'll go at 10% and above 30% we'll run at 80% say and in between it will adjust uh, on a linear ratio from uh, 10 to 80 percent from 25 degrees to 30 degrees so that will ramp it up uh, there again the main reason for that is that you will probably want to always maintain some fan speed because normally people are actually more interested in sound volume than anything else and for the same reason you might only want the maximum fan speed to be 80 because it's too loud so this is where you set so at the minimum fan speed we're doing 80 uh, sorry at 10 we're doing 10 percent below the minimum value and we're doing 80 percent above it and you can set the mode from manual or automatic Under display we have a whole host of things. This is basically where you can adjust the UI for changing the sensor colors. So you can select the home page where you've got the little graph and, and the second home page. You can adjust the color to whatever you want. Uh, that's for each line. You can adjust the update speed. You can adjust the graph lines. So which order they're in and which ones you can see. You can adjust the brightness of the screen. You can set up sleep mode so the screen will basically turn off after a period of uh, non-use. And we can adjust the UI. This is green and white. We can go through and change them all to something else. I'll need to go back to display that, but let's not worry about that. Uh, we can do the back image, which is this background image. Uh, graph limits. Oh, you can change the sensor names. So sensor names, you can actually adjust what the names are from what are there. There are presets but you can adjust the name of it if you don't like what I called, called it. Uh, and graph limits is pretty useful. So on the home page, we have the literal graph that's going up and down. We also have these little percentage bars. And this is where you can define what the maximum value is that is displayed on that. So for cold side temp, I've got between zero and 30. If we reduce, change that to a different value then that would affect how high we are on the graph and how sensitive it, sensitive they are okay what we're going to do now is we're going to change the temperature from 7 to 27 uh, which means we should swap from cooling to heating
Okay, now obviously it's stopped cooling because the temperature is now higher than ambient. So we're going to hopefully see it reverse. It sits for about 30 seconds before it changes mode between either cooling or heating. That's to prevent it from swapping backwards and forwards when it's close to the target temperature. And that would be super bad if, it's, if the controller started heating, cooling, heating, cooling, heating, cooling, just like that. So it requires a change for about 30 seconds. And now it's heating, so we should see that fly up and we should see the hot side come down, which I think we did because now the hot side is cooling and the cold side is heating. Because there's no volume, there's nothing on the cold side of the TSEs, it's much harder to keep a temperature but it will work itself out eventually so zero if you remember zero is now not heating or cooling so the higher the graph goes the more heating it's applying Whereas previously, the lower the graph went, the more cooling it was applying. Anyway, um, this is a project that I've created for the world. I really want people to reproduce this because this has been one of these things in my life that I've always wished was out there, that we could um, have a temperature cool controller for TEC that would do heating and cooling um, and all that good stuff. So it's maintaining a 27 degree pretty much perfectly, did it pretty quickly too. Please consider becoming a Patreon because I have another project that's uh, even more amazing than, than this that will cost a lot more money. Um, I do fund virtually all of these by myself uh, and also with the help of Patreons. And I like to make these things available for everyone to use. So please consider signing up. Uh, thank you for watching this. Hopefully this has been good. I hope you guys have realized how cool this is. That you guys can finally have a decent TEC controller. Alright guys and girls. See you on the next one. Bye bye.